Cool, cool, cool. Kiana. Um, um, we are going to be talking about the rapture today, um, really just dealing with uh, what's to take place. So, so last week we actually talked about where are we now. So we talked about where are we at in this timeline that we see in the book of Daniel and exactly what is to come in Revelation. And we talked about some of the events that need to take place in order for the tribulation to actually take place. There were three there are three main ones. Uh, one of them have already took place. One is in progress, and the one that we are waiting for is the rise of the United States of Europe. Um, today, we're going to be um, really talking about uh, the mystery and um, the victory, uh, is what Paul calls it. And um, um, I want to pray. So. Um, we're going to talk about the rapture. I'm going to give you some history. Uh, it's, it's hard for you to talk about prophecy if I don't give you any his, history of how we got this and how we get to some of the terms. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, hopefully, um, I, I stay as close to time as possible. If not, trust me, it's a treat uh, of the information I'm going, to, I'm going to share. So let us pray, then after that we can get right into it. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, God, for being such a gracious and loving God. God, we actually thank you, God, for a God that knows our heart, that is close and near to us, that um, has a plan, even when we don't understand. Uh, God, I actually just pray right now, God, as this message is going forth, God, and, and um, God, it's a, it's a lot of heavy stuff that I'm saying, God, that, that God, that you um, move. God, I actually pray, God, that they don't hear Justin, nor do they see Justin, all they hear and feel is your love, God. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Man, let's go ahead and chop it up. Um, I want to say this phrase every week uh, so you understand this, that God has a plan. Yeah. He has a plan. Yeah. You know, watching TV and watching news can start getting you to start doubting that God don't know what he's doing. Uh, even in your personal life you can start feeling like, man, maybe God don't know what he's doing here, but God has a plan. Yeah. And um, you might not understand what he's, what's going on, but everything is working in his timing. Um, <clears throat> um, when, when I was preparing for this, um, um, this, this concept of mystery, uh, I want to just um, um, dive into it because Paul is going to call it a mystery and a victory over death. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 is where we're going to start. Um, and I'm doing marriage counseling right now, and uh, whenever I'm doing marriage counseling, the interesting part is that I always allude to that this is so much bigger than what you, you think you're part of. And it, it says this in Ephesians 5, uh, 31. It says, therefore, a man should leave his wife, for a man should leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one. And I, and I know you're saying, you're like, this is the end time. What do marriage have to do with end time? Trust me, we're going to get there in a few minutes. Ephesians 5.32 says this. This is the mystery. This mystery is profound. This is the mystery that we're going to be talking about today. It's profound. And what he's talking about, he said, I'm not saying it in refer. I'm saying it in referring to Christ and the church. So, so marriage it's very, very reflective of end time promises. I'm going to try my best to cover as much as I can through this. So, so, so one of the things that we takes place is that sometimes people desire marriage for their own fleshly desires and don't really understand what they're setting up to reflect. Um, um, I had a mentor tell me one time, he said, Justin, um, if you want to serve Christ, stay single. But if you want to reflect Christ, get married. And that was something that really touched my heart because he says that you can serve Christ perfectly single. Paul said in so many words, you should do this. <laughs> you should crush it single. But if you want to reflect the image of Christ, get married. Marriage is ultimately what God is trying to reflect on this earth. And I'm going to unpack a lot of this in a few minutes. But with that being said, I'm going to talk about the rapture, right? The rapture, if you don't know, is this glorious event when the dead in Christ will be resurrected and the living believers will be instantly trans translated into resurrected bodies 
both groups being caught up to meet Christ in the air, taken back to heaven. And, 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 the, and the crazy part about this is that um, this is amazing because Christians should never fear death. This was something that I was, I was working on because a lot of people, they'd be like, man, I just want to be raptured. I don't want to die. I'm like, why? The end result is the same. You're going to get caught up. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get caught up instantaneously and translated into a glorious body. Um, we're going to see in the text, the dead in Christ would, would get it first. <laughs> yeah. so, and so, and so if you have a problem being last in line, you <laughs> shouldn't be afraid to die because you're going to be first in line to get caught up. And, and it's really this idea of the rapture, right? So many times when people are talking about the rapture, he go, one of the biggest criticisms that we usually hear in, um, in the, is that the rapture is not found in the Bible. That word isn't found in the Bible. Where did you get that word? And I'm like, ah, okay, this one thing started getting uh, historical. Uh, the word rapture is taken from the Latin word raptio, which means caught up. You, you, this word is found in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 17. And the interesting part is that, what well, you're saying, where's this Latin coming from? I would assume that rap, the word rapture would come from the Greek and the Hebrew, since that was the Bible was written in. But in the fourth century, um, this is my history lesson, um, Jerome's rapture was commissioned by Pope Darius I. And um, to translate the Hebrew and the Greek Bible into Latin. That Bible is called the Bargat. And um, which is the most common language at the time of the Roman Empire. So um, the Pope was like, I want the Bible so the everyday person can read it in their everyday language. And they translated it the first time in history into the common language. This, this point in the history is the reason why we have the philosophy of why the, our Bibles are translated in English. And we're not just reading out the original text in Greek and Hebrew. So, when he translated the Bible, many of the phrases that we see in Christianity come from that Latin uh, language. Uh, so, raptio is where we get the word rapture, and that's Latin. This view today that I'm going to cover is called pre-tribulational view. There's two other views. I'm going to hit on it. I'm not going to take a lot of time doing that because if I do that, the sermon is going to be... <laughs> way too long. So I'm going to hit on them. I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you what they believe. I'm going to tell you why we shouldn't believe those. And uh, I'm going to use some scripture to back it up. Um, so the phrase caught up literally means snatched or taken away. Throughout scripture, God protects his people before judgment. We actually see this in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 5 through 9. Here are some examples. Enoch was transformed to heaven before the judgment of the flood. Noah and his family was in the ark before the flood gates were open. Lot, we all know Lot. He was taken out of Sodom and Gomorrah before the judgment came down on that city. He got the firstborn of the Hebrew people in Egypt was sheltered by the covering of the blood. And the spies in Jericho and Rahab were all safely protected before the walls and the judgment fell on Jericho. It is seen throughout history and as we read scripture that God always preserves his people. And I'm going to give you a little bit more as we're going through this, right? So two, we will assume that the church will be preserved from what we're going to be covering later in this series, the tribulation. So the question is, when would this event take place, right, is the question. And I'm, I'm going to try to hit on this as much as I can. Uh, I'm going to look at Revelation chapter 3 and 10. We believe that the, revel that the rapture is going to take place prior to the tribulation period. And this is one of the key verses. Um, this is a promise that Jesus in, his, in himself, if you have a, uh, a Bible that's in red, uh, he's, he's speaking this to the church of uh, Philadelphia. And he says this, because you have kept my word, about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming 
on the whole world to those who dwell on the earth. This is very, very key because there's a couple things that we need to uh, notice. He go the first word is the dub before the hour. The dub before the hour let us know that it is a specific and distinctive time that he's talking about. And we know that this time that he's talking about is what he's getting ready to cover in chapter four, right? In Revelations. So, and so this is what he said. My promise is that I'm going to keep you from that hour. He go to, he go to other article that is very, very interesting. That when you look at the Greek, that word from is the Greek preposition ek, which means to separate. You know what I'm saying? Not just preserve, but to snatch out. We're going to talk about where we get this snatch out from, right? So, and so what he's promising to this church is that I'm going to pull you from this period that the whole world is going to have to go through and drill. Right? So, and so it's interesting because everyone doesn't believe that. Some people believe in what you call post-tribulation rapture, meaning that we're going to go through the whole tribulation, then at the end of the tribulation, God's going to rapture us up. He goes, the reason why we don't believe that, because what the Bible tells us in Revelation 19 is that the, the church believing ones come back to heaven with Christ. What? So, so we're going to get snatched up just to come back down? That don't make any sense. Right? So, and so, and so we instantly crash that one out. He goes, the second one is what you call mid tribulation pre great wrath. Right? There's two parts of the tribulation period it's the tribulation and that's what you call the great tribulation. Many people believe pre trip, meaning that the church will stay here for three and a half years, and right before the great tribulation takes place, God is going to snatch us out. He goes, the problem is that, is that, believe it or not, the first three years of the tribulation period is still bad. The second half is, whoo, I can't, we're going to talk about that. I'm talking about head going to be rolling. But that first half is still bad. So, and so that doesn't make sense with the promises that he gave us of that he's going to preserve us and keep us from that hour. So we totally reject that because none of that really lines in scripture and, and really lines up with what we have seen as we do our systematic theology of scripture throughout the Bible, right? So we got the timeline. The, tri the rapture take place before the tribulation period, right? Now this is the heart of my sermon here. Who is going in the rapture? This is the bunk of the sermon. Right, because we want to know who's going. And I will say this, do you get your ticket before I get into this? Um, what we see in scripture is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to, before we even get to what people, what theologies is going to take, to, we want to look at some scripture and actually look at what is going to be removed. Then we are back our way into it and figure out who are those people who qualify for that. Okay, perfect. Let's go right into 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 1. It says this, Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, in our beginning gathering together to him, we ask you brothers, right? So this is what he's talking about. When, when Jesus is coming back and when they're being gathered, he's going he gonna to start explaining some things. He said, not to be quickly sh shaken in the mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seem to be from us, to affect the day of the Lord has come. What Paul is really covering in this, this section is that he's talking about false prophets. If you look before that in that chapter, he's addressing people are false prophets. So he's saying, concerning these end times, if someone is saying that they they from God, either with a leather that looks like it's been forgerized by us or that, that, that don't trust them. Verse number three, let no one deceive you in any way for the day will not come unless the rebellion come first. Remember last week, we actually talked about the great falling away. This is what he's talking about here is that there's going to be a great falling away, right? And he says this, 
And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Who is that? We want to, I'm, going to, I'm going to unpack that. Who is exposed and exalted himself against every so-called God object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God and proclaim himself to be God. What they're talking about is the declaration of desolation in the temple. They're talking about the Antichrist. So this is what he's saying. There's going to take a place where the Antichrist is going to be revealed. He's going to reveal himself. He's going to sit in the temple and he's going to declare himself to be God. We've seen that in Daniel. But Paul is telling him this event is going to take place. Let's keep reading. Um, verse 5, he says, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Paul is bringing it back to their memory. So, sometimes we can forget. We can get lazy. He said, and you know that this is what, he said, and you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. So check this out. There is a restrainer that's keeping the Antichrist or the devil himself in place right now. You might not believe it, because you think this is crazy. You'd be like, Justin, Pastor Justin, they're killing babies. And you're saying that there's a restrainer on this earth that's keeping evil from growing even worse than this? Yeah, buddy. And God is going to remove the restrainer. We want to see that in verse 7. He says this. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So everything that the Antichrist is going to do is working right now, and everything is moving towards that. Believe it or not, everything right now, people, power, uh, I, I, I told you, technology, everything is working to get in place. There's a coming to alignment. And only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. So the rapture is when God comes and he gets the restrainer. We're going to explain what the restrainer is in a few minutes. Verse number eight. He says, then the lawless one will be revealed. So, so this is what we know, that the Antichrist cannot be revealed until the restrainer is removed from the earth. Wow. Right? So if anyone like, man, that person, the Antichrist, I'm letting you know, the restrainer is still here. They lie. They ain't the Antichrist. Why? He cannot be revealed until the restrainer is moved from the earth. B Bible. Whom the Lord Jesus would kill with his breath uh, from his mouth. I'm telling you, Jesus coming back, he's going to have a sword in his mouth. He's going to have fire in his eyes, tattoo in his thigh to say king of kings, right? He's going to be, he's going to come back like mad and fight ready to fight, bring down a whole posse in his mouth and bring to nothing by his appearance of his coming. Verse number nine. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders. Verse 10. And with all wicked deceptions for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth so they can be saved. So that's a, that's a, that's a, a catastrophic underlying. Who's going to hell? Those who refuse to love the truth. You just don't want to believe it. You just don't want to do it. We want to really unpack this in a few minutes. You just want to. So you can't be saved. So, so what happened when a person refused to listen to the truth? Therefore, God, verse 11, God sent them a strong delusion. So they may believe what is false. God himself said, because you don't want to believe it, I'm going to take the restrainer and you're going to even believe even the worst about it. There's a chance in this season. We actually talked about the seven dispensations. We are what you call in the dispensation of grace. There's a grace in this season so that you, the word is being preached right now. There's going to come a time where it's going to be harder to believe it. Even harder. Believe it or not, the Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to tell you who the restrainer is. The Holy Spirit is the restrainer. Believe it or not. The Holy Spirit is just not living in us, but he's also floating around 
and nudging people when they want to do even more evil things. He's telling them, don't do it. You might say, I don't know about that. Eh, you know about it because it did it to you before you got saved. You was like, oh, I'm going to hurt. The son was like, don't do it. You was like, yeah, I shouldn't do that. You were even in your spiritual mind, but the Holy Spirit was present, keeping and restraining you. What's going to take place after the rapture is that God is literally going to pour that out of the earth. He says this, believing what is false, in verse 12, in order that all may be condemned, who did not believe the truth, but had pleasures in unrighteousness. Listen, people who's going to hell choose to go to hell. Oh man, that's a hard, the that's a hard theological decision to say. Why? What we see in the book of Romans is that there is what we call natural theology that God, that every man knows that there's a God. You can accept it, you can reject it, you can do anything. But when you go outside and you look at the skies, you look at the, yes. at, at the ground, you, you look, better yet, even if you don't go outside and you stay at home and you take your hand and you put it on your heart. And you, and you realize, like, I'm not even thinking about it in this work. Something inside of you should say, I didn't do this. No one in here started their own heart. No one in here started their child heart. You didn't say, start. It just start. And there's something inside of here that when you start to reject, to submit to that authority, you're falling in rebellion. I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah. You can do what you want to do. But in that rejection, you are putting yourself on the path of condemnation. We, I'm going to really try to unpack a lot of this in a few minutes because the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. So who's going to be raptured? If God is coming back to remove the restrainer, those who have the Holy Spirit qualifies to be raptured. Let me say that again. Because a lot of people don't get this. Only, I'm going, to, I'm going to clarify, only those who have the Holy Spirit will be raptured. But I go to church every Sunday. You, ain't, you got the Spirit. If you don't got the Spirit, you ain't going. And I'm going to explain this in more detail. You ain't going. You're not. But I'm a good person. Eh? He's coming back for the restrainer. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit did. I'm going to really unpack this in the next couple minutes, you know. So he's coming back only for those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. And like, and like this is when things get murky. Because I can read, you say, but Justin, I can read in Revelation chapter 6 verse 9 that there's believers that's being persecuted. And like this is why mid-tribulation people, people start saying, oh, them the church, they still there. No, 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 no. There's two different types of saints that we see in the book of Revelations. We have church saints which is us in this age is called church saints. Then, then you have what you call tribulation saints. Believe it or not, every preacher ain't going to heaven. That's right. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh, you're going to trip some people out. They're going to turn on the TV, and the preacher man's still going to be on there preaching. <laughs> you still here? You're still here? They're going to be preaching. And when it happens, something is going to happen on their heart that they're going to start preaching the truth. Amen. A lot of preachers are preaching lies. Scratching the ears of their listeners. Right? But when God starts picking the people up, listen, God coming from the saints, there's still going to be Bibles here. In the sense, God not going to come and take the saints and the Bibles. The Bibles are still going to be here. So people are going to start opening up their Bibles and they're going to start saying, 
This stuff was spoken in the Bible. It was prophesied. I need to get my life together. The crazy part about it, I'm, 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 trying, I'm being transparent with y'all. Those things are going to die at massive numbers. I'm letting you know, the easiest time to be a Christian is now. If you're banking on, I'm going to make it a tribulation, I'm letting you know. I'm going to do the numbers, I'm going to do the math, you ain't going to make it. But I'm going to be a Christian, I'm going to get dedicated. If like you can't get dedicated and come to church where there's no persecution in your life, when people are hunting you down, telling you you can't go to the grocery store, you ain't going to get saved. Because you don't got the discipline today to be saved. Get it done today. So, so now is the season of what we call grace. So there is a distinction between church saints and tribulation saints. The church saints will be raptured. Right? Let's talk about the church saints because there is my favorite group, and I'm going to tell you why I know He's coming back for the Holy Spirit. Uh, the church saints is the bride of Christ. I actually started off by saying this is the mystery. People don't understand marriage. Marriage is Christ and his bride. Reflection. Christ is coming back from his bride. I'm going to really explain this in a few minutes. But how do we know that he's coming back? The Christian, the scripture Portrays Christ's bridegroom, found in John 3, 29, and the church found in Revelation chapter 9, verse 7. It's the backdrop of the imagery that's rooted in Hebrew weddings, happening in three phrases. So a Hebrew wedding happened in three phrases. The first phase is the marriage is legally consummated by the parents and the bridegroom, after which the groom went to prepare a place to live in the father's house. Let's look at first, uh, John chapter 14. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me also. This is Jesus talking. In my Father's house are many rooms. And if it were not so, I would have not told you so, that I go to prepare a place for you. So Jesus is actually echoing Hebrew marriage. He's saying, I'm coming back for you. Look, he says, I'm going to prepare for you. Verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you will also be. Verse 14. And you know the way to where I go, I'm going. So what he says is that I'm going to come back and I'm going to prepare a place for this. So the first thing is the it's the confirmation. Then after the covenant is made with the parents, we'll talk about how the covenant is made in the parents in a few minutes, the bridegroom go, he leaves the bride because he has to go prepare the place. Then he comes back for the bride, right? How do the parents know that the groom is going to come back? He actually does this thing, what we find uh, in scripture that he plays what is called earnest money. Um, um, it's, 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 um, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm, I'm trying to understand American culture and Hebrew culture, but it, it get kind of icky, so I'm going to let scripture help me work my way through this. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says this. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God. So he put him in. Who have given us a spirit as a guarantee. This is what we know. Is that the spirit is the guarantee. That word guarantee in the Greek is arrow bone. Which is um, this ideal of earnest money. It will be equivalent to our time. I can't, I can't, I can't say it's, it's just like. But it will be equivalent to our time as an engagement ring. Did you know that, that the Holy Spirit is your engagement ring? So when Jesus comes back, he's not coming back for any girl. He's coming from the one that's wearing his ring. Mm. 
And if you don't got the ring on it, <laughs> this is how we know he's coming back because he left the ring. He left the deposit. And, and many times, people like, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, that's optional. You can get it, you know, it, it, it'd be better if you had it, but you, you don't really need it. Oh, no, you need it. And a lot of people are thinking like, I mean, I'm good. I'm going to church and stuff. But are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? This is a serious thing because, listen, listen, you can't, man, I'm telling you, this is why people are going to be salty because there's preachers that's faking it. How you ever seen someone who tried to get in somewhere with a phony ticket? They'd be like, this counterfeit. You can't go. But it looked just like it. No. I put the light on it. It's phony. Like, and this is what God is going to do is that he's going to come back and he's going to say, do you have the legit Holy Spirit? And with those, he's going to rapture. So we actually see that he's coming back for believers with the Holy Spirit. That is our guarantee. It's, it's, it's very critical that we understand what we're going through and why he's coming back. Right. He goes the next phase after he um, go and he prepare and he leaves the deposit. He come back to pick up the bride. That that's the rapture, right? And 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 um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a real transparent moment with you guys, because because many times we think um, I, I like I like told. Michelle, this morning, I'm going to start calling these moments that I have with you TV moments, transparent and vulnerable moments. You know what I'm saying? Being a Christian isn't easy. You know what I'm saying? There's a season that your thoughts and what you're feeling contrast against what the Word of God is. Right? I'm, I'm going to tell you about this idea of what we should be doing before he come back. Right, because I think you need to understand this. There's period in your time is that what the Bible says is that the, the groom sanctify his, his bride by the washing of his word. But what happened when Jesus is speaking things on your life and you just don't believe it to be true? Jesus saying, I see you as a person of value. And you're saying, I don't see myself that way. And you choose to now to go fulfill that something else outside the will of God. Every time you do that, what you do is you take the ring off. You say, I don't feel like I'm worthy for that. I don't. I don't. And it's, and it's many times if you are going through that. I'm telling you guys, I, your pastor, struggle in these areas. You might say, how that's possible? Even Paul struggled in these areas. Anyone who sit up here and tell you they don't struggle in this area, they're a liar. And the truth isn't in them. And the struggle is, you don't deserve it. That's the words I hear at some of the time. Man, you always messing up. Why is he coming back for you? You can never get it right. You're still struggling with that? And, 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 and um, listen, it's, it's Satan telling you to forfeit the engagement ring. Go live your life. You already messed up. Man, I don't know about you, but I ain't the perfect husband. I think Michelle is the perfect wife. <laughs> but, 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 but. Christ knew you was jacked up when he proposed. He already know you a mess. He already know you ain't perfect. That's why the Holy Spirit is here doing this thing called sanctification. Every day is transforming you and getting you ready and prepared to look more and more like Christ and get ready for Christ. Listen. Christ, listen. This is why he haven't came back today. You ain't ready. 
You might feel like you're ready, but you ain't ready. And he like, I'm giving you time to get yourself together. I'm giving you time to go out and share the gospel. I'm giving you time to actually look into your life and start saying, God, search my heart. What are the things that's in my life that is unpure and unrighteous and not right? What are the, listen, listen, I'm going to cover this next week. What are the actions, thoughts, and words that I do in my life that doesn't align with you? This is the time that you get it right. This is the time that you say, Holy Spirit, work on me. Work on me in this season. I want to go. Right? And, and listen, listen. This is not something you can do by yourself. This is why Jesus says, I'm going to give you a helper. He know you can't do it. He know. He already know you jacked up. He like, Peter, you jacked up. But I pray for you. That when you are converted, I'm praying for you. I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know. The most beautiful thing is knowing that in John chapter 17, our Lord is praying for us in this season. Save them. Keep them from the evil one. It's his prayer. Keep them. Keep them. Listen, whenever you feel defeated, just raise your hand and say, help me, Jesus. I say it all the time. Michelle thinks something's wrong, but I just know. And that mom might be like, help me, Jesus. <laughs> Out of all my studying, all my praying and stuff, I still read, help me, Jesus. I just say it. She's like, what's wrong, baby? I just need Jesus. <laughs> Anyone that thinks that they don't need Jesus is a liar. I'm telling you, they are a liar. And there's so many people who get, who get all puffed up. They got big hats on and, and robes and staffs and stuff. And they make you feel like they got it figured out. They're a liar. Yeah, this is why I'm never shocked when I see a scandal. They be like, this man, this man, this man, this man huh? he's here. He needs Jesus. He needs Jesus. He needs Jesus. He says this, and the final phase we're going to cover next week is the marriage supper. We're going to talk about he come back and get the bride, then after that they have the wedding, then it has the supper. We're going to cover that next week. All these three phases are seen in Christ's relationship in the church and the bride. And um, I want to just go ahead and just knock it out. I'm going to read some, some rapture verses, and I want to just break this down. Um, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, verses 50. He says, I tell you this, brothers, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. If you're doing it with your own flesh and blood, you ain't getting to heaven. You ain't getting to heaven. You can't inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. 1 Corinthians 51, he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, blink. Blink. We gone. We out of here. Blink. What? Where'd he go? He was sitting next to me. What happened? Where'd he go? In the twinkling of the eye, at the last trump, for the trump will sound, and the dead will be raised and perishable, and they shall be changed. The dead will be raised in first. For this perishable body must be put on imperishable, and this mortal body must be put on immortality. 54. When the perishable put on the imperishable and the moral put on immortal, then shall come to pass this saying in writing. See, you see, you see, I don't really like this because people quote 
um, 1 Corinthians 15, 54, redness, and I'll be like, eh, not now. Not now. Why? Death is swallow up in victory. Mm. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? If you ever went to a, a funeral and people crying, that's the sting. It hurts. But what, what Paul is saying is that death is not the final say for Christians. Death does not have the final word. So we might cry today, but we'd be like, man, death, where's your sting? Because you're not going to hold them in the grave. Cancer, you have no victory over the saints. You might win this, this, this short-term battle, but God is going to win the war. Amen, amen. And, it's, and it's, the, it's the excitement to those who are believers and filled with the Holy Spirit that we know God is coming back. The thing of death is sin. And the power of the sin is the law. Verse 57. But thanks be to God who give us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my b- beloved brother, be steadfast and movable, abounding in the works of the Lord. Right. There's something to be to happen with you knowing that you have a plan and God has a plan for your life that you don't sit on your butt. You're working. Listen here. Listen here. Everyone in here. Quick second. Pass the moment. What have God called you to be faithful in this season to? What have he called you to be faithful in this season to? This is something I have to ask myself. What have God called you to be faithful in this season to? Some of us is being parents. Make sure that your children know the gospel. Some of us is, is God have been pushing on your heart. Read your scripture more. Be faithful in that in this season. Some of us is, you know, I don't mean to say this, but God is whispering and saying, you need to get your finance under the budget. My God, I love McDonald's. Be faithful in the things that he calls you to be faithful in the season. Stewardship is critical in God. Abounding in the works of the Lord. Knowing that the the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Trust me, sometimes raising kids, you feel like your work is in vain. Sometimes going to work, getting the budget, making those sacrifices, and you still feel like, I still feel like I'm broke. Is it worth it? If you're being faithful to what God called you in season, it's not in vain. So the first thing, right? Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Then start living a perfect life. I'm going to tell you the third one if you're going to talk about holiness. But look, let's look at 1 Thessalonians. And I'm going to read a big block of 1 Thessalonians because... I feel like this is where we get the bunk of our theology around the rapture. It says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Listen, believers, this is what I'm trying to tell you. You should not be grieving when you're... You know someone with the Holy Spirit passed away. We cry. Eh, it hurts. But we know they serve, their soul is secure. We know that's not where they're going to be laying for eternity. Since, for since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fell asleep. Verse 15, for this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, 
will not proceed to those who fall asleep. He's talking about the, that you're not going to die. For the Lord himself will decree the sin from heaven with a cry of command, with a voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up, raptio, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will always be with the Lord. Verse 18, therefore encourage one another with these words. So there was many times I, w I have went to the hospital and there was believers who had cancer and they went on the down bed and I see fear in their eyes and I say, don't worry. You will see your family again. Find rest in Christ. Yes, Lord. This is not over. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's, and it's encouraging words that whatever they're battling, it's not over. Chapter 5, verse 1. He says all that. The rapture getting caught up. Now concerning the times and the season, brother, you have no need to have anything written to you. For, for you yourself are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Now, what do Paul mean by that? If you ever was sleeping and you got robbed, you didn't see it coming. That's exactly what he means, like a thief in the night. You went to sleep, your TV was there, you woke up and it was like, it was gone. <laughs> you have no clue of where it went. You don't even know how they got in the house or when they got in the house. You just know it's gone. gone. That's what he means by a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security. I'm letting you know. God is going to make you think everything's going perfect. Mm. Then suddenly, destruction will come upon them as labor pains had came upon a pregnant woman. I don't know about you. I seen my wife in pain. I was like, whoo. <laughs> and this is the kicker that ending. Ain't no epidurals. They would not escape. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you how this looks. Is that the rapture is going to take place. Everything is going to start getting back to normal. And like, they're going to be like, oh, I'm so happy those preacher people gone. <laughs> Always saying that judgmental stuff. This is so much better. Okay. <laughs> Skipping. Then boom, judgment. Everything is going to get dark really fast. Boom. And that's when people are going to be like, ah! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's going to happen so fast, and they're not going to be able to get escape. Man, I'm gonna, I'm, we're we, we going to look in Revelation that people are going to want to kill themselves, yeah. and they can't. Can't do it. Won't die. <laughs> I'm going to drink this bleach. Wake up the next morning. What? I thought bleach killed you. <laughs> Yes. Why? There is no escape. Verse 4. But you are not in darkness. Talk to the church here. Brothers, for the day to surprise you like a thief. Why? He's coming to get you before this happens. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, who says tell you, this scared me when I was young. I was, man, there was many times I was like, I'm not going through tribulation period for five minutes, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it ain't worth it. And I, why? Because when he come down, I don't even know. I'm out there playing Usher. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping it like it's hot. Go home, my mama gone. 
Is it worth it, people? <laughs> because I already know I came home and did this. No! <laughs> Is it worth it? He said, you're not going to know. For you are all children of light and children of day. We are not of the night or darkness. I'm letting you know. You ain't made for that tribulation. You ain't about that life. I know I'm too soft. <laughs> Call me marshmallow. <Okay>. Puffs. <laughs> <laughs> you put me in heat, I go, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> I ain't about that life. Why? I'm, I'm, I'm light. I'm day. <laughs> I ain't darkness. <laughs> Verse 6. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. Get your mind right. That's what Paul's saying. Stop slacking on your duties. Because the devil don't got you believing that you got a long time. Now you slacking. You're like, oh, I got time. Who told you that? <laughs> I didn't tell you that. <laughs> Get it right. He says, be sober. Verse 7. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, drunk at night. (laughs) But since we belong to the day, let us be sober. What, What he was talking about, those who sleep, talking about depression, and stuff like that. When times start getting bad, you just want to just not pay attention. You don't want to do anything no more. Time getting bad, you want to find the alcohol. You know, I need to make it a little bit more modern, Paul. You want to find that pill. You want to find that marijuana. <laughs> I need something to numb my pain in this darkness. Because I'm no longer pursuing Christ for my holiness, but I'm trying to numb myself in the darkness. He says, you got to be sober. Having to put on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet of hope of salvation. Listen, the breastplate of love is to cover your heart. Faith and love keep your heart intact. Hope of the salvation. Keep your thinking right. For God did not designate us for wrath. See, I love this. I underlined it. I ain't probably going to a tribulation. I'm not made for it. I'm not designated for it. He didn't say, Justin, I vote you to go to wrath. (laughs) No, he didn't say that. So when I heard the gospel and they said, this is your opportunity. I raised my hand, I walked to the thing, and I said, I want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of my sin. Then I got out that water, and I said, I'm only halfway there. I'm going to need that other stuff. So the mothers in the church took me in the room. Put me in the room with a whole bunch of other kids. And they said, say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) And I stayed there for an hour. The person next to me started saying mumble jumble. And I said, oh, you got it? (laughs) What's wrong with me? (laughs) This is a TV moment. Transparent, very important. I said, what's wrong with me? I started praying even harder. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Being honest. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Saying it so fast, I'm like, I go, no, 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 no. <laughs> Mother of church walked to me, she said, dang it. <laughs> Stop playing, Justin. This is serious. Two minutes later, the girl behind me starts speaking in tongues. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I said, what's wrong with me? Why can't I get it? 
And the mother of the church came to me, and she said this. I'm always going to believe this. She says, the Holy Spirit is a gift. I'm going to remember this. He cannot put it in you if your hand is closed. And she says, what are you holding that you're afraid to let go? What's in your life that you're holding that you're afraid to let go? I don't know if God want to do this for me. She said, let it go and say, I want that more than what I'm holding. And just like that, something hit. The whole room got cloudy. And all I know what the mother of the church said, he got it. <laughs> and in my mind, I was just saying, thank you, Jesus. But it wasn't coming out that way. Right? And it's, and it's really about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Then it says, God had destined me for something greater. Verse 10, and th this is it. We're going to wrap it up. He says this, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Whether you're dead or alive, his goal is for he want to be with you. Verse 11, therefore, encourage one another, build one another up just as you're doing. Listen, you don't have to work hard to get the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. It's a gift. If you want it, get baptized in the name of Jesus. Right? Say, God, I don't want to be in sins no more. I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. Then after that, you, then you go to a place. You know what I'm saying? We should have a Terry service. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm open that up to a, we should have a Terry service. It's that you, you actually didn't say, I need some time to let go so that God can come in. Listen, I got three minutes and I'm going to wrap it up. Listen to this. Holiness is not crossing off a list. I'm telling my wife this. I said, the church of old got us all traumatized and messed up. They have taught us that holiness is a checklist. What you wear, what you do, what you don't do. And some of us are so traumatized. But that's not holiness. Holiness is where your heart is. Holiness is where your heart is. Wow, you can do everything on that list and your heart be far from God, you're still going to hell. Holiness is where your heart is. Holiness finds you where you at. Holiness is the constant decision that I want God more than anything else. And so my prayer before we wrap up is that what's in your life that's challenging that thought? I want everyone to get caught up in the rapture. That's my wish. Listen, I want you to go. But I'm letting you know it ain't my car, so I can't invite you in. <laughs> right? Almost like these kids today. They be like, hey, mom, I told what's car you can drop her off. How you want to say it ain't in your car? <laughs> right? I can say I want you to go to heaven, but you got to know Jesus. You got to ask him yourself. You got to connect with himself. I know I got my ticket. I hope you got yours. This is the season to get it. Listen, do not leave this place if you're not sure where you're going. Don't leave. Listen, don't leave. Right, we can have off the service right after this. We cut the cameras off, we can go, we can go for it. Right, don't leave. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, now is the season to get it. Now is the season to get it. Listen, that's holiness. It's living for Christ. Listen, I'm not going to tell you, hey, you're supposed to be wearing this and this and this. Trust me. If the Holy Spirit ain't you, the Holy Spirit is going to let you know you can't walk out like that. I don't got to tell you anything. You feel me, mama of the church? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen, I don't got to check on you every week. Are you living safe? 
The old preachers used to do that. This pastor got a job. <laughs> I text you, you good? <laughs> but I can get back to work. I need to make sure I check on my own soul. Wait. Wait. I am not a babysitter. I'm not your babysitter. Trust me. If like you want to go out there and do your thing, I don't want you to do it. But hey, it's your life. It's your life. My prayer is that you get on this bus with me and get out of here. Mm-hmm. Come now, you know it's going to get way ghetto. <laughs> way ghetto. We need to get out of here, right? So that's my prayer for you. That's my hope. Do not leave this place. If you want to be baptized, we can baptize you in Jesus' name today. Give us like 30 minutes to want some water. I'm telling you, it's going to be warm. (laughs) We're going to do it right now, right? If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, right, let me know, right? Second thing, right, And, and, and this is close to my heart. If you sitting here and you're like, man, I haven't spoken the Holy Spirit in a long time. I, I don't even know where it's at. I know I got it. I put it somewhere. And I don't know where it's at. Let us try to revive that today. Right? All right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we ask you to just come to your throne. God, we just thank you for your your words of grace and your word of love toward our lives, God. Father God, search our hearts. God, I ask you pray, God, that we know, God, that you are coming back for us like you promised. God, we ask you this love that your heart and your mind is for us. God, we ask you pray, God, that this is a word of encouragement, God, that you have not destined us for trouble or wrath. But God, you are made, you are giving us the option. Your grace is here today for us to walk into it and lean into it and live for it. God, we just thank you for what you're doing. Father God, I ask you to pray for the person that's on the fence right now. They might be watching you, might be in this church today that's, that's like, do I do it? God I, God, I pray, God, that you push them and nudge them to the place where they're willing to surrender their lives, that they're willing to let go of that dream, that hope, whatever they're holding, that they're willing to let go and and accept you fully. God, I just thank you for this message. God, I thank you for your heart. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 If anyone wants to pray, um, we're going to cut the camera off, but if we won't need to have a terrier service today, let's go. Because if Jesus come back tonight, I'm letting y'all know I ain't going to be here. Don't text me. Don't text me. Don't text me. Don't call my phone. <laughs> I ain't going to be here. Hallelujah. Right. right. I love you guys. And uh, next week, we're going to start talking about the events that happen after the rapture. Then we start moving towards the tribulation. Cool? I love you guys.